My mom says I used to pl- love to play with any type of round object growing up. Bouncy balls, tennis balls, baseballs, even my dad's big orange physio ball. So I used to o- occupy myself for hours on end just by throwing them around the house and chasing after them. She compared me to a dog when I was young, except I didn't need another person to play fetch with me. I was four years old when I officially started playing. My first team was at Strawberry Vale Little League in Victoria. I vividly remember having my having a shirt that was about two sizes too big for me, but I didn't care at that point. I was just excited to be playing real t-ball with other kids for the first time in my life. Hitting the ball, throwing the ball, catching the ball, I just loved it all. Fast forward eight years and I was considered one of the best players for my age group in my city. And while this is not saying much for a city of 350,000 people off the west coast of Canada, it still felt like a a decent accomplishment to me at the time. Two years later, and I did not make the team I tried out for for the first time in my life. I was 14 years old, and it felt like my whole world came crashing down upon me at the time. As the phone call finished with the coach who told me that I needed to get bigger, faster, and stronger, I remember bawling my eyes out for a whole hour. But more importantly, I devoted myself to making that team the next year, which I proudly did. I've played baseball now for 16 years, and at a high level for the better part of the last 10. To this day, I still feel that the sound of a baseball hitting a mitt, whap, is one of the most weirdly calming sounds in the world. Looking back on my life, there are many things that have gotten me to where I am today, Many things that have taught me priceless lessons at a young age. When you look back at your life, I'm sure that you have these things as well. In these next few minutes, I'm going to share with you how one of these things has affected my life, that thing being baseball. I will tell you how it made me learn very quickly how to deal with failure, how it made me aware of how to bounce back from setbacks, how the process of trying to achieve something grand has taught me more about myself than baseball. So, how has baseball helped me learn how to deal with failure? Well, baseball is different from almost any other sport. If you are successful 3 out of 10 times when hitting a baseball, that is considered amazing. If you do this at the professional level, you will most likely end up in the Hall of Fame one day. Hitting a moving round ball with a round bat is the hardest thing to do in all the sports. Of course, they don't tell you this when you're 10. I recall multiple times coming home from the field with tears rolling down my cheeks because I did not get one hit that day. That made me feel like I was a complete and utter failure. What I did not know at this moment was that this was teaching me a very important lesson. Failure is imminent, and what really matters is how you deal with failure. While this may sound cliche, I really do believe this is the truth. You only truly fail at something if you fail to learn something from it. If you walk away with newfound knowledge, You didn't fail, you learned. At 10 years old, I didn't know that the lessons that I was learning by not hitting a baseball were actually more significant than the ones that I was learning when I did hit a baseball and actually succeed. While this seemed like a small lesson at the time, it returned to be a huge lesson down the road. These lessons would pay off even earlier than I expected, as baseball also quickly taught me how to deal, how to come back even better from a setback. For those of you who have been told that you are not good enough for something, it is truly a unique feeling. Whether it was for a sport, a job, a relationship, I can almost guarantee all of us have been rejected for something before in our lives. Whatever the circumstance, I know for me personally, it causes my mind to just go in all sorts of directions, questioning myself what I could have done differently. If I had changed maybe just one thing, would the result have been different? This is how I felt when I got rejected from a team for the first time at 14. I sat and asked myself, why wasn't I good enough? What made these other kids good enough? What could I do to make myself good enough? This instance taught me how to use a setback to actually gain momentum towards what I wanted. How to use a rejection as a source of fuel to just get plain better and prove them wrong in the future. This lesson has carried over to many different areas of my life. In school, when I receive a grade that I'm not satisfied with, I do some thinking and usually figure out how to do better the next time. In relationships, when they do not go the way that I want, I look back and find ways to better myself as a person and overall as a human being. 
In sports or a job, when I'm told I'm not good enough, it makes me want to work even harder to prove them wrong. It makes me want to build something that says I am good enough without actually having to say anything myself. These are all lessons that I learned from experiencing a setback at a fairly young age that caused me to crack at the time, but come back even better in the future. One of the things I'm most grateful that baseball allowed me to do is pursue a grand goal of making it to the major leagues one day. I've learned a lot about myself in the process, which I will share now. We all have days that we do not feel like doing anything. We do not feel like participating in any activities. We do not feel like leaving the house. We don't even feel like getting out of bed and turning off Netflix. A significant thing that baseball has taught me to do is how to is that anything great does not happen overnight. When trying to achieve something great in your life, you often learn a lot more about who you are yourself during the experience than anything else could teach you. Ever since I was a teenager, I wanted to become a professional baseball player. I wanted nothing more than to hear my name called on draft day in June, signifying to myself that I finally accomplished my goal. However, from the process of trying to achieve this goal, I learned that it's not actually the act of achieving the goal that shapes you, but what you become during the process. The pursuit of this goal has revealed to me many things that I would have never learned about myself any other way. Firstly, I learned how much I can truly endure. From not being able to play a sport that I loved for a year and a half due to injury, it showed me what I'm willing to go through for something that I love. Secondly, I learned that sometimes you have to do stuff even when you don't want to. There are some days I would literally do anything else than play baseball. There are some days when I literally feel like I'm about to pass out in the gym. But to get closer to my goal, I've realized that I have to do these things anyways. This has translated to other areas of my life as well. Whether it's homework or finishing a job, it has showed me how sometimes you just have to put your head down and do the work if you want to be successful. The goal of trying to achieve something that is very, very unlikely to ever happen has shown me very priceless teachings. And the goal in the first place is all thanks to a love for a sport that I developed at a very young age. I think by this point, it is clear to see what type of impact baseball has really had on my life. It's crazy to think how simply the decision to play baseball has made a difference almost on every other part of my life up to this point. I consider myself lucky every day that I'm even here with the lessons I have learned in the past. So to state one last time, baseball was quickly able to humble me and force me to deal with failure at a young age. It caused me to embrace setbacks as part of life and how to better myself going forward from them. And it also showed me how the pursuit of something grand can cause you to create a process for yourself that carries into all other aspects of your life. Baseball is not a game for everyone, and it doesn't have to be. It's something that I am able to dive into for hours on end, where I can just forget about everything else in my life. I don't think of myself as giving anything to baseball. I think of baseball giving a lot more to me. Each time I step on the field, even now, I think of the old four-year-old in the oversized t-shirt with the ear-to-ear -ear grin just being happy to be out there on the field with the other kids. And not knowing this, this crazy, amazing, frustrating sport would have such an impact in shaping the young man he is now.